Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Route Learning Series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Trans Pennine Manchester to Leeds route, which has just been released by Dovetail Games for Train Sim World. And the route is actually set in the 1980s. The train that I'm going to be driving today is a Class 45 diesel electric locomotive. I'm going to be driving a full run of the route between Leeds and Manchester on the 1521 departure in service mode. Our stops along the way will include Dewsbury, Huddersfield, Staley Bridge, and finally Manchester Victoria. The Class 45 locomotives were also known as the Salzer Type 4 diesel locomotives and they were built by British Rail at Derby and Crew Works between 1960 and 1962 with a total of 127 of these locomotives produced in two subclasses, the Class 45-0 which used steam train heating and the type that I'm driving today, the Class 45-1, which uses electric train heating. The maximum power output of each locomotive is 2,500 bhp, or 1,864 kilowatts, with an at-rail horsepower of 2,000 or 1,491 kilowatts. They have a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour, though we won't be able to get up to that on this journey today. The locomotives produce a maximum tractive effort of 55,000 pounds of force, or 245 kilonewtons. They were withdrawn from service between 1981 and 1989. Now in the cab of the locomotive, let's quickly go through the setup procedure here. So what I'm going to do is to move the master key into the on position. So just click on that and drag it upwards. So the master key is now on. The next thing I'm going to do is to move the reversing handle to the EO position, which stands for engine only. I'm now going to press H to turn on the headlights and I'm going to press I to turn on the instrument lights so that you can see the instruments much more clearly, especially when we're traveling through the tunnels, which can get very dark indeed. So now that I've done that, let's have a quick look at some of the controls here. So on the left hand side of the cab, we've got two brake handles. We've got the locomotive brake, which you can see there being operated, which I'm not going to be really using on this journey today. And then below that, we've got the main train brake handle, which was at that point set to the emergency position. So I'm just moving the handle back now a bit. And this is a smoothly controlled uh, handle. So at the end of the day, you don't have steps of braking like you do with many units that I drive. Just above that, we've got the horn control. So that's a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the N key. Now if we continue around the cab here, in front of us there we've got the vacuum train pipe pressure and then just to the right of that we've got the brake cylinder pressure indicating how hard the brakes are applied. So if I move the handle now to the release position you can see that both needles are falling towards zero and when they're pointing at zero then the brakes are fully released. If I now want to apply the braking, if I just move the handle to the initial apply position, you can hear the hissing there. But it actually takes a moment for the brakes to kick in and begin to apply, which is something very important to bear in mind when driving. You need to plan ahead so that you've got the brakes on when you need them. You can't just, like, say, with a modern unit, you hit the brakes to step one and they're immediately in step one. Uh, with this, you've actually got to wait for the uh, brakes to gradually apply. And conversely, with releasing the brakes, they gradually release. Just to the right of that we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour as you can see there and then beyond that we've got the ammeter next to the speedometer. So as I'm accelerating and the locomotive is generating power then you'll see the needle in the ammeter going up and then if I leave it at a certain power setting then gradually the amps will begin to fall away. When you're accelerating um, I try to keep the ammeter needle in the green zone. You can see there's a green and a yellow zone on the gauge there. So I'm going to try and keep that in the green zone so as to not overload the locomotive. Now just down here we have the power handle so if I just put it in forward for a moment 
we've got the on position and then we can gradually um, move the power up and down again it's not a notched power handle so you can adjust the power very smoothly but it's quite challenging to know what power setting to use to try and maintain a particular speed so now that we've had a look at the controls there let's just open the cab window because the sound is far better with the window open and now we're pretty much ready to depart out uh, through towards Manchester Victoria but just uh, also like to point out here that there is no driver safety device on this locomotive in fact I believe this was done by a dead man's pedal um, which is how it used to be done years ago where you just had to keep the pressure on the pedal if we have a look down there we might be able to see it looks like I can see a pedal there so yes that would be the dead man's pedal and you just have to keep your foot on that um, to ensure that the train moves and the idea is if you pass out then um, perhaps uh, the pressure will be released and the brakes would go on but it was known for some drivers to put say a toolbox or something on the pedal to weigh it down because it could actually cause your leg to ache a little having to keep your foot on it for too long and the final thing to mention is that this route actually lacks AWS, which actually wasn't fitted on this route at the time that it's modelled in the game. So as a result of that, you've got to keep an extra close eye on the signals so that you know what you're doing and to ensure that you don't end up having a SPAD or signal passed at danger. So now we've had a look around the cab and we've set up the train ready for departure. Let's take another quick look at the train stopped here at Leeds station before heading out towards Manchester, Victoria. Departing away from Leeds, the starting speed limit here is 10 miles per hour, with around 8 miles to go to our first stop, which is Dewsbury. I'm currently in a low power setting, trying to maintain 10 miles per hour here, and I will um, decrease the power if we end up accelerating at all, but right now I think the throttle is pretty much the lowest setting before idling. must say Leeds certainly looked uh, very different back in the 1980s to how it looks today and the biggest omission of course is the overhead wires as the East Coast Main Line hadn't been electrified up to this point in the early 80s anyway it was uh, towards the late 80s um, but in addition to that I don't think that there were any electrical services much at all in the um, north other than the West Coast Main Line. We're about to pass here the first of two junctions with tracks diverging to the left. At the second of these junctions then the speed limit is increasing to 20 miles per hour. So we're now passing the second junction, the speed limit here is increasing to 20 miles per hour and we can accelerate up towards that just before the next signal. So now going to increase the power to start accelerating up towards 20. And we're 
we're about to enter an upward gradient here of 1 in 83, so I might actually need to give us a little bit more power to try and maintain the speed. At the next junction just coming up, we're going to diverge to the left, and as we turn left, the speed limit is increasing further to 25 miles per hour. We can start accelerating up towards 25 miles per hour in a moment, just as we've reached the signal on the opposite track there, so just after we've passed that can now accelerate up towards 25, so I'm just going to increase the power a little more now. At this junction just here, where once again we diverge left, the speed limit is now increasing further to 60 miles per hour just cut the power back for a moment as we were reaching 25 there. And I'm now going to start accelerating up towards 60 miles per hour just before we reach the signal there on the opposite track. As the speed limit increased to 60, we had two and a half miles to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. we get up to 60 miles per hour and then going to shut off the power and just allow the train to coast. The next landmark I'm looking out for is a signal by a footbridge, at which point we've then got half a mile to go to the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction. shut off the power and the train is slowly coasting down towards 50 miles per hour due to the upward gradient that we're currently on. We just passed the signal by the footbridge with half a mile to go to the upcoming 50 limit. Once we've entered the 50 mile per hour speed zone I'm then going to need to go to a mid power setting as we're going to be on a 1 in 120 climbing gradient. the 50 mile per hour speed post there. The speed posts are actually quite difficult to see on this route as they're the old style BR speed posts which were just yellow numbers with no background. accelerating there a bit too much so I've just cut the power back now to allow us to lose just a bit of speed.
We're now coming up on Morley Station with four and a half miles to go. things I notice here is that uh, for some reason in the tunnels you can see the uh, front of the train there keeps getting lit up which it really shouldn't be it should be remaining uh, completely dark oh I should have also mentioned here that the speed limit did in fact increase to 60 miles per hour as we entered the tunnel so I'm just going to increase the power now just to bring our speed up towards 60 the power back to try and ensure that we don't end up speeding and as we head towards the tunnel end in fact we're going to start on a downward gradient of 1 in 137 so I've just cut the power off completely at this point I'm just keeping an eye on our speed I might well need to use the brakes to control our speed as we leave the tunnel on the downward gradient I noticed that this route has jointed track throughout, which is actually quite nice to hear. And with the Coco wheel arrangement on the Loco, which means that there are six wheels and three axles per bogey, you can hear the uh, triple clickety-click sound as we go over each track joint. I've now just made a minimal brake application just to bring our speed down a little and now I'm releasing the brakes completely so it just brought us down to 55 miles per hour and now the train should coast back up towards 60. At the tunnel exit there we had two and a half miles to go. shortly be coming up on Batsley station and at that point we've then got one and a quarter miles to go to Dewsbury. So we've just passed Batley Station with one and a quarter miles to go and I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop just as we approach the next signal which has just over half a mile to go between there and Dewsbury Station. There is also a 50 mile per hour speed limit which comes into force just before we enter the station. on the signal ahead. So I'm now making a brake application to start bringing our speed down in time before we stop at Dewsbury Station. slowing down slightly too early here so I'm just releasing the brakes momentarily now I'm going to reapply them just to ensure that we are going slow enough for entering the platform now releasing the brakes once again and I can now see the platform at Dewsbury just coming up 
here at Dewsbury Station, as with all of the stations on this journey, in fact, I need to stop at the end of the platform. stopping slightly too early there, are just trying to release the brakes and I just managed to release them before we came to a complete halt so I can just crawl a little bit towards the end. I'm still trying to get used to um, using the brakes on this particular locomotive. Um, with the long delay in apply and release it's quite a challenge to try and stop in just the right place. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Dewsbury, the speed limit here is currently 50 miles per hour, though it is very soon going up to 60 miles per hour. And we've got around 7 miles to go to our next stop, which is Huddersfield. So with the speed limit going up to 60 miles per hour along here, it's actually dropping to 55 shortly after that, so I'm not going to accelerate to above 55 miles per hour at this point. And then as the speed limit drops down to 55 miles per hour, we then need to start thinking of slowing down for an upcoming 45 mile per hour speed restriction. So now we're doing 55 miles per hour. I'm just pulling the power back here. And in a moment I'm going to shut off the power and just allow the train to coast. I'm now braking for the upcoming 45 mile per hour speed restriction which will be coming into force shortly after passing through this station. The station that we've just passed through is Ravensthorpe. So we're down to 45 in time, but um, unfortunately I didn't quite manage it with the brakes there, so we ended up dropping to about 42 or 43 miles per hour. And now along this section, the speed limit is now increasing to 80 miles per hour. So even though the speed limit is in, is in fact increasing to 80 miles per hour, we've got just two miles to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit.
We're now coming up on Murfield Station, and at this point I'm now going to shut off the power, and I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit as we approach the next overbridge. made an initial brake application to start bringing our speed down towards 50 and the 50 mile per hour speed limit comes into force at a junction coming up in a moment where we diverge to the right. I'm allowing us to slow a little bit more beyond 50 as shortly after the junction we're then going to start on a 1 in 100 downward gradient so I need to be prepared for that and I'm probably going to need to use the brakes to control our speed. it seems like I might have slowed down enough there as we are slowly creeping up towards 50 miles per hour but as we go through this short tunnel just here the gradient's going from down 1 in 100 to up 1 in 70. So I'm now starting to give us some power try and, to try and prevent us from losing too much speed here. The gradient is now levelling out at this junction just here and the speed limit is increasing to 70 miles per hour immediately after crossing the junction. At this point we've got around 3 miles to go to Huddersfield. We've also now started on another climb of up 1 in 102 which is affecting our ability to accelerate. The next landmark I'm looking out for along here now will be Dayton Station, which we will be passing through shortly. And once we've reached Dayton, then we've got around one and three quarter miles to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. passing Dayton Station. What I'm looking out for now is an underbridge which is next to a chimney and once we've reached that bridge I'm going to idle for power and then I'm going to start applying the brakes as we reach the next signal after that. See the chimneys there on the left. I'm now looking out for the next underbridge, which will be coming up very shortly. So I've now shut off the power. And we're now coming up on the next signal, so we're now preparing to brake for the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. And then there is a 15 mile per hour speed limit that comes into force not too long after that 40. So I really do want to continue slowing down in time for the 15 which comes into force just before Huddersfield Station.
So from that breaking point there, I've just literally used the initial brake application position, which is the lowest possible brake application. And that's brought our speed down to 15 quite nicely in time for the 15 limit. You can now see the platform at Huddersfield Station coming up just ahead. And here at Huddersfield, I'm aiming to stop once again at the end of the platform. just realised I actually slowed down slightly too early there. I thought that that was the 15 limit at the previous junction. It's actually this upcoming junction where we turn left in a moment. So we could have taken that ju junction behind us slightly faster than we did. So we're now just crawling up towards the end of the platform. I gave us a little bit of power as we were moving through. I've now shut the power off and I'm preparing to stop in front of the signal which is coming up just ahead. so we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Huddersfield, the speed limit here is currently 15 miles per hour, with around 16 miles to go to our next stop, which is Staley Bridge. The speed limit is in fact increasing here to 50 miles per hour, and it did um, as we were entering the tunnel there, so I can now start accelerating towards that in a moment. I just want to be sure that the rear of the train is fully in the tunnel first. realized I went right up to full power there where I really shouldn't. I took the ammeter right into the yellow zone. So I've just cut the power back now. That would have probably overloaded the locomotive in reality. We are currently on a 1 in 96 upward gradient, which is affecting our ability to accelerate.
The speed limit is now shortly going up to 65 miles per hour. And we can accelerate towards that well, once we've reached the next overbridge coming up. I have noticed that some of the speed posts appear to be missing on this route, which has happened with a few routes made by uh, Dovetail Games, which is rather unfortunate. I do hope that uh, they fix this issue in the future, because uh, missing speed posts are quite a pain when you're trying to drive without using the HUD. So we're now on a 1 in 105 upward gradient, which is still affecting our ability to accelerate. a rather large viaduct we're about to in a second and at that point we've got around 14 miles to go. As we get towards 65 miles per hour, I'm going to cut the power back a little, but not too much, and because I don't want to end up losing too much speed here, and you need to be in a pretty high power setting to maintain the speed at around 65. I'll we'll just cut the power back slightly now, we're doing around 62, and I'll keep an eye on our speed. This is a route that I've actually, I actually only travelled for the first time in real life about two, three weeks ago. I did it between Manchester, Victoria and Leeds in a Transpennine Class 185 unit. And I must say, it's a very enjoyable journey and I was quite surprised by just how scenic it is as you're travelling through the Pennines. passing Slathwaite station with two and a quarter miles to go to an upcoming 55 mile per hour speed limit.
what I'm looking out for along here now is a double underbridge, at which point I'm then going to shut off the power just after there and allow the train to coast down to 55 miles per hour. Passing the underbridge here now. I'm now going to shut off the power and just allow the train to coast down to 55. We're now down to 55 miles per hour, so I'm just going to give us a little bit of power here. We actually slowed down to 55 slightly too early as it comes into force at this signal just here. And now we've got half a mile to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. shutting off the power once again and I'm just going to give us some very light braking now. Just to bring our speed down to 45. We're now passing through Marsden Station with 10 miles to go. said 45 mile per hour speed limit there. I just realized it was actually 40. So I might have been going over speed very slightly for a moment there. We're now about to enter Standage Tunnel, which is one of the longest tunnels on the UK rail network. And as we enter the tunnel, the speed limit is now going back up to 65 miles per hour. So I'm now going to accelerate up to 65. Once we've reached 65, I'm then going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. And I'm going to slow for an upcoming 45 speed limit, and this one is definitely 45, uh, which is just before the tunnel exit. To around 65 miles per hour and I'm now cutting the power back ready to just allow the train to coast. One of the problems here is actually trying to work out where the tunnel exit is as it keeps looking like the exit is coming up on you and then a bit more of the tunnel loads ahead. Something else that I hope can be fixed in the future in Train Sim World.
think that I can now see the actual tunnel exit, though I'm not completely certain. I'm still now going to break for the upcoming 45 just in case, because I want to make sure that I am down to 45 in time. So we're now down to 45 miles per hour, and that definitely was the tunnel exit that I could see. At this point, we've got six and three quarter miles to go. The speed limit has now just gone back up to 60 miles per hour. Once again, there was no speed post for it on this track, but there was on the opposite track for the speed limit reduction for some reason. I'm going to accelerate up towards 55 miles per hour and then shut off the power as we are now on a downward gradient of 1 in 125, and I may need to use the brakes to control our speed as we get closer to 60. giving us some light braking now to bring our speed back down towards 55. And now I'm going to release the brakes once again and just allow the train to coast back up towards 60. Now coming up on Greenfield Station with four and a quarter miles to go.
coming up on Mosley Station, which, knowing northerners, I'm going to guess is probably pronounced as Mosley Station. And we've got two and a half miles to go now to Staley Bridge. We've now got a power station coming up on the left hand side as we pass that. We've got around one and a half miles to go and one and a quarter miles to go to an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed restriction. So I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 15 restriction uh, just before we enter the next tunnel but as we're approaching that tunnel as the 15 speed restriction comes into force at the tunnel exit. Approaching the tunnel that I mentioned, and as I was slowing down to ensure we didn't break the speed limit anyway, I'm now just going to leave the brakes on to bring our speed down towards 15. just reducing the braking momentarily and now re-increasing uh, just because I felt we might be slowing down slightly too quick there. And we're now down to, well, about 12 miles per hour. I think we are still on a slight downward gradient, so I'm just going to keep an eye on the speedometer now to ensure that we don't end up crawling up in speed too much, though the gradient is levelling out here. And according to the signal indicator there, we are cleared into platform three at Staley Bridge Station. Speed did in fact just creep up a little bit there. We probably got up towards 17 miles per hour just before I applied the brakes there just to bring our speed off a bit. And now more of the train should be on the level gradient so our speed shouldn't be increasing anymore. I'm really not sure what those blue markers are on the platform here. I have not seen them in train sim world before. I try to drive with all markers turned off, so I'm, I'm really not sure why they're there or what that's all about. But if you're more aware than me, then please do let me know in the comments. So here at Staley Bridge Station, I'm once again aiming to stop at the end of the platform here. Once again, I put on the brakes a little too early, and because they take so long to release, um, we almost stopped. Thankfully, we didn't quite stop, and I'm now able to crawl up towards the end. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
Departing away from Staley Bridge, the speed limit here is currently 15 miles per hour with around 7.5 miles to go to our next and final stop, which is Manchester, Victoria. As we're now coming towards 15 miles per hour, I'm just cutting the power back to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. At the junction coming up just ahead, we're going to diverge to the right, and at this point, the speed limit is going up to 75 miles per hour, but we're only just over half a mile from an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction, so we're certainly not going to be able to get up to 75 before we've got to uh, start thinking about slowing down. In fact, I don't even think we'll get above 50 uh, before we reach the 50 zone. We can start accelerating in a moment as we reach the next underbridge. I'm going to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour, and then as we reach 50, I'm going to shut off the power and just allow the train to coast. Looks like we might have slipped to around 16 miles per hour there. Slightly faster than intended. As we're driving in the um, 1980s, British Rail were a lot less strict then with speed restrictions than they are today. Certainly um, trains would speed very slightly, in fact maybe more than slightly. I'm sure that trains were going more than one or two miles an hour over the speed limit at times and drivers could pretty much get away with it, unlike today where train drivers literally never speed. Speed limits now drop to 50 miles per hour just as we enter the tunnel here. I've shut off the power to allow the train to coast, but there is in fact some slight downward grades coming up. So I'm just going to brake very slightly to bring our speed down to maybe around 45 just to allow the train to coast up a bit. We're now coming up on Ashton under Line Station with six miles to go. There's a few small gradient changes along here now, going up and down a little bit, but the gradients are actually very short, so you've just got to keep an eye on the speed to ensure that we don't end up accelerating or decelerating too much. Right now the speed is creeping up a bit, so I'm now going to give us some braking, just to control our speed here, and ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. Coming up in a moment, the speed limit will be further increasing to 60 miles per hour, and we can accelerate towards that. I think it's just after this next overbridge, there's a signal immediately after it. Yep, I can see the signal there, so once we've reached that signal, we can then start accelerating up towards 60 miles per hour, and I'll accelerate to 55 and then just shut off the power and allow the train to coast. Now doing around 53, I'm just going to cut the power back now and allow the train to coast at this point because we are now on a downward gradient and so the train should coast up towards 60 miles per hour and then I'll just use the brakes when we get to 60 if necessary just to control our speed. The next speed change will be a reduction in the speed limit down to 45 miles per hour 
and I'm looking out for some tall buildings coming up on the right hand side and at that point I will then apply the brakes for the 45 limit. You can now see the tall buildings coming up just ahead, so in a moment, once they're towards the right-hand side, a little bit more, and then going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 45 limit. As the speed limit here drops to 45 miles per hour, we've got around one mile to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed limit. So we've just passed the 45 speed post there with one mile to go to the 20. We'll shortly be coming up on Park Station. to start applying the brakes for the upcoming 20 limit in a moment just as we get towards this next signal after park station Unfortunately I can't actually see any clear speed posts that mark where the 20 limit begins. I know it's somewhere around the area of this junction, so I should be down to 20 in roughly the correct place. Either I've completely missed the speed post on the practice runs and on this recording, or otherwise the speed post just isn't there. We're actually down to a bit below 20 there. But our speed is slowly creeping back up. We're now coming up on Miles Platting Station. After passing through Miles Platting Station, the speed limit will be increasing to 40 miles per hour, and we can accelerate after crossing the next junction. However, there's a very steep downward gradient along there, so I'm going to uh, try and really not use too much power uh, due to the steep gradient. If I remember rightly, it's something like 1 in 50, something like that, which in railway terms is certainly very steep. 
So we're just crossing the junction now where the speed limit is increasing to 40 miles per hour. At this point, we've now got one mile to go to an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit. I'm just allowing the train to coast here. You can see the speed is actually going up fairly quickly for not having power, indicative of the steep downward gradient that we are now on. So the breaking point for the upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit will be at an overbridge and then the 15 limit comes into force at a junction just before um, arriving into Manchester Victoria Station and then the speed limit drops further to 10 miles per hour uh, just before we enter the platform. So I allowed the train to coast up to 40 here and I'm now putting the brakes on to slow down. I believe that this second overbridge is the one to slow down for the upcoming 15 limit anyway. So I've now got the brakes on and I'm bringing our speed off quite nicely. See that we do have a double yellow signal ahead. And we may have slowed down just slightly too early here, in fact. So I'm just allowing us to coast for a moment. I think it's just after the next signal, in fact, where the 15 limit comes into force. So it brought us down to 25, and I'm just allowing us to coast. But of course, with the downward gradient, we're increasing it in speed fairly quickly at this point. I can now see the single yellow signal coming up. So I do need to be down to 15 by the time that we reach that signal. slowed down slightly too much with the harder braking that I used there but that's okay due to the gradient that we're on we dropped to what about 12 13 miles per hour the 15 limit comes into force immediately at this point here I'm having to use the brake straight away to try and control our speed Now bringing our speed down to 10 miles per hour in time for the upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. I'm now not going to exceed that. Actually brought us down to probably 7 or 8 miles an hour. Um, but I think we're still partly on the downward gradient so we should probably creep back up towards 10. Now coming into Manchester Victoria Station, once again I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform here. And this is the old Manchester Victoria Station, it's been completely remodelled since this time. Again this is a station that I visited for the first time only a few weeks ago, back in October in fact. I've been to Manchester a few times recently and um, I've travelled into and out of both Victoria and Piccadilly stations. And Victoria Station has certainly been drastically modernised since the 1980s and it's integrated with the uh, tram link as well because uh, Manchester is one of the few cities in the country to have trams as well and there's a major tram station that's been integrated as part of Victoria Railway Station. I think Manchester Arena is also a part of it as well uh, from what I could see. So we slowed down just a little too much there. I'm giving us some power now just a little bit as we come towards the end of the platform.
and I'm now going to cut the power back, idle the throttle and apply the brakes just to stop in a moment. Now let's just apply the brakes to bring us to a gentle stop. And so here we are, arrival at Manchester, Victoria. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with a link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. And if you'd like to sponsor this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for more information. Once again, the link to that is in the video description. Once again, thank you for watching.